Alright, so since we already have pillars 1, 3, and 2, 1, 2, and 3 already in place, you will notice that there are some similarities between the equation for electric force and electric potential energy. They involve the product of two charges, meaning the magnitude or how basically how big the force is or how much energy you need to bring the charge from infinity to a point depends on the magnitude of both charges in the scenario. But you notice the unique thing about pillar number two or the electric field strength is that it's only dependent on the charge that you are measuring. Like what Miss Ellie said just now, we don't care about the second charge. And for physics people, if we can care less about one thing, it's more efficient, life is always better. So if you're struggling with this idea of per unit charge, maybe you can think about your favorite and very first physical constant that you encountered in your physics study, your good old 9.81 Newton per kg. Newton per kg. So this is basically a sticker price on gravity. Yeah. The Earth say, hello, Earthling. Welcome to this realm of existence. For every 1 kg of matter that you manage to grow, I will provide upon you 9.81 Newton of force. So when you are a little tiny baby and you are 3 kg, your force of gravity will be 9.81 times 3. If you are a big human now and you eat a lot during MCO and you are 100 kg, then your force will be 9.81 times 100. So this is so that we can have a number to get to decide what, how, how much forces do we need. And we don't want that number to change when I put in a different... If let's say I think about force on an elephant and force on a human and force on a potato, they're all different mass forces and then I confusion. So I just want to multiply mg and call it a day, which you have done many times in your AS, easily, mm -hmm. with no pain. So we're going to repeat the same treatment because when we study field, it's actually something that's really abstract and complicated. So we would like to per unit charge it as well to bring it down so that it's only dependent on the charge that we are measuring. So from here, potential difference is work done per unit charge. You have seen this before. We have emphasized this before repeatedly when we teach circuits. The Remember definition. Remember how it looks like? W equals to QV. Look familiar? Yeah. Slightly different alphabets. Lah, but almost yes. Okay. yes. So this actually tells us that, let's say for example, if you have 3 volt, it just means that you need 3 joule of energy for every coulomb. So yeah, okay. So we're gonna write the definition down here. You can see it's work done per unit charge in bringing it from infinity to a point in the electric field. So we already have the equation for work done just now. We painstakingly integrated it like a good student. So what then? K Q Q over R. So we are gonna divide this. But we which charge are we moving? We are moving Q two. So this means that W. That you, you, your U, which will be Q1, your Q2V, yes. Because Q2 is a charge that we are moving. Okay, and we are looking for V. So we're going to try to come up with an expression. And we can substitute U now. This will be KQ1, Q2 over R squared divided by Q2. Similar to the electric field strength, Q2 will then conveniently cancel out. And what remains now will be KQ1 over R. Mm. Uh, box this one also. Long. There we go. Okay, unit volt. Very familiar. V is volt. Long. From mm. electric circuit, oh. all the same thing. Of yes. Yeah. So if you look at the chapter order, right, this is chapter 17. Uh. That's why it's 17. Mm. Okay, so anyway, this is volt. Uh, sometimes can be joule per coulomb if you are feeling fancy. Yep, but normally it's volt. And this is a scalar because its predecessor or its act, the work done was scalar. Okay, so for this one, both values will follow the inverse square law. So no, this is the inverse law, 1 over r. So it will decrease, but it won't decrease as quickly as 1 over r squared. So here, we're going to have this equation already, but how the graph look like there? Also 1 over r, so all this inverse, inverse square law, you can compare. Mm. Let's compare with the neighbouring one. Mm. You know, there's a, if you're lucky, right, this is a past year question. They just ask you to graph out the ER and the VR graph for the same charge. Then they give you like 6 marks, you know, guys. That one is bonus question. Later we do lah. 
So Miss, what's the difference between these two? Uh? I think V will not drop as fast as E. So this is 1 over R squared. Square. This is 1 over R only for our V. So maybe so just make a little less... Wow, my lines. Make a little less steep. Hmm. Something less steep. Mm, okay. V proportional to mm. 1 over R. So 1 over R graph is less steep. Long. 1 over R squared is more steep. So mm. if you have to draw them on the same graph, I don't know why you would, but if you ever do that, just keep this in mind. The differences mm -hmm. between the two types of functions and graphs. Mm. So if you look at the four pillars, right, we have managed to relate all three pillars except two and four. So I mean, I have a maths brain, so I'm thinking if one to three is integration, then 4 go back to 2. Differentiate can ah? I mean, differentiation, integration, they're kind of like undoing each other, reverse each other, so mm, can ah? I guess Probably we can. can. We can try. Let's try to differentiate V, the expression for V. Let me put a reminder. Question mark? Differentiate. Okay, we see we differentiate V and we see what we get. Uh, okay. Remember respect to R. We respect to R because R is the variable. You keep moving the charge. Okay, so if we differentiate this, let's let me rewrite this whole thing again up here so we can see it very clearly. So mm -hmm. V here will be KQ over R. Mm -hmm. When you differentiate it, I guess it depends on what notation you want to write, but dV dr, dr means you are differentiating V with respect to R. Yes. So you differentiate this on what you get. Uh. Differentiate 1 over R only. K and Q are constant, so you don't have to worry about that. Negative 1 over R squared. Yeah. If you're wondering, Miss, how do you differentiate? Go check out the Math Booster videos that yes. I have made on what is differentiation and what is integration, especially if you don't take maths. You'll be like, what was this? I don't remember. Yes. If you need to brush up your maths, then you just need to go watch the videos. Hmm. So, well, yo, this one looks like E. Leh. Very familiar. Eh? What is this? KQ mm. over R squared. What is this? KQ, KQ over, over R, R squared. Square. Nani? Let, let's rearrange a little bit. So maybe I put the negative this side. So we just have KQ over R squared. Mm. And this KQ over R squared is hmm, electric field e strength. strength. E. E. Ta -da. So what is this negative DVD? Is there a specific name for it? Ah? God, God. My, my math teacher tell me you differentiate, you find gradient. Oh, so it's negative gradient. Okay. Negative potential gradient. Because it's so, a potential graph. Huh? This is what it's called. And for some reason, CIE love asking students this. This is like their, you know, their drag force question in AS. <laughs> so this is a bit that similar kind of question in A2. La. They like to test you in different ways, whether you understand that to find electric field strength, you are to find the potential gradient and add a negative in front. You've been thinking, well, it means why is there a negative? Remember the FDR had the negative when you integrate? Same idea, huh? You're going, you're reversing the process, ma. So there will be a negative. Okay? So let's write it down here as a reminder to ourselves. Mm. If you ever want to find the electric field strength and you have the poten electric potential, all you need to do is differentiate. Mm. Or, wait, let me write this in, the, in a nicer way. You want to find electric field strength, right? Mm. You dv dr. But don't forget, it's a negative, negative sign there. Yes. It's also known as the negative potential gradient. Yes. So, all these things, if we zoom out and we stare at all the equations, right, they look very similar. Some got 2q, some got 1q, some the r square, some the r don't square. So, if you're thinking, miss, they got give me equation, uh, I got good news for you, they got give. I got bad news for you, they only give you the potential equation. So I oh, guess, <laughs> uh, not, not the potential gradient equation, just the KQ over R. Or in CIE, they actually call it Q over 4 pi epsilon not R. They, they write out the whole 4 pi thing out. So in this case, right, if you are thinking of needing to recall this equation, if you know how they are related, you can move between the pillars. So the red arrows are actually very important. Not just the definition itself, but... Let's say for, for some reason you cannot recall what's the equation to find electric potential energy. So you need to know how to start with the equation that's given to you in the question paper and move around, like playing a game, move around across the four pillars.
So what remains in this chapter, we will apply this concept in various, various scenarios to help us understand what is all this, huh? It feels very abstract, leh. Okay, lah. So hopefully the other videos will help you do that. Let's go back to this single point charge animation, but we're gonna add some ideas to it. So you have learned about electric field strength, electric potential energy, electric potential, which is very interesting because we're gonna look at that today. So electric potential. So if you notice, ah, uh, there's all these green lines here that we have drawn on this thing. Those are what we call equipotential lines or equipotential surfaces. So if you move that little measuring thing, if you put it at one of the line, all along that green line, it will be about five volts. So at that point, it's five volts. If you move it somewhere else, then if you go up, you cross to another equipotential line, it's at a higher potential already. Why? Because you're closer to the positive charge. So you see, oh, 10, oh. go to the next green line, you will go to an even higher potential, 15, going uphill. Okay. If you go to all the small, small, very close one, you see I go to 19, go to what, 20, and so on and so forth. Equipotential, uh, by the way, means same potential. Means uh, it all along the green circle, so from that side, 4.9, okay, roughly 4.95, go up, up there also about 5. So it means all along the green circle will have the same potential. 5 volt, 5 volt, everybody 5 volt on, around that circular line. So uh, that is what we call equipotential. If you notice the relationship with those yellow, sorry, the white color arrows, what are the white color arrows? Electric field. The arrows show you where the electric field is pointing. You notice a pattern, right? The white arrows are always perpendicular to the green lines and pointing from high potential to low potential. Let me repeat one time. Notice the white arrows are perpendicular to the green lines everywhere. And they point from a high potential to the lower potential. So that is the whole thing about how this potential and electric field direction can relate. But the fun thing is, actually you can visualize this in a 3D space. So if you jump over to this, okay, this is the equipotential lines. I said they're now different color, lah, okay. So uh, if we rotate this picture uh, and we try to visualize it in a 3D way. So this is a nice thing about this. I highly encourage you to go try this out. If you rotate it, then you see, eh? Miss, what is this? Potential. Okay, so this is just to help you visualize how it is. How, what does it mean by potential? Imagine now uh, if you're on earth, you climb up a mountain. Your potential is increasing. You have more potential energy. But here, you are thinking of electric field. You are climbing up this volcano. Actually, you go all the way, lah, but we chop off the top part a bit. Okay, you see those black lines? Those are the equipotential lines that we looked at earlier. So all along there, you are at the same potential. If you are on the mountain, you go around the mountain like that, you are at the same height, same potential. Okay, so that is how you can relate both of these. Uh, equipotential lines and this idea of what it means is going up. What yeah, and you, and you see this one, uh, this is... 5, this will be 10, this will be 15, this will be 20. If you stare on the vertical plane, the increment looks the same. The gaps are the same. But if we rotate this such that it is from the top, the gaps between the lines are different. This is because there is this thing called a slightly different gradient. See here, the gradient here is different. Hmm. So if you put like a marble, okay, not marble, you put a charge on top there, a positive charge, let's say, so positive, positive repel, mm -hmm. it will like roll down this mountain, mm -hmm. okay, so that's why we put a positive and positive charge, they yeah. will repel and one will so-called roll. That's why the electric field lines will point from high potential to low potential. So many information can be deduced and many ideas are shown in one simple volcano diagram. Yes, negative charge, ah. Negative charge, how leh? Can we do a negative? Okay, let me try. Okay, notice that as I shrink oh, the charge, mm. it will be narrower and narrower. Oof. Okay, this is negative. Okay. So if you put a positive charge near this volcano, where will it roll, roll into the valley? Leh, leh? Mm. That's because positive and negative attract. But so you if you want to draw the electric field lines, or you have to decide where it's pointing. Leh. 
But you notice that the equal potential surface have the same shape, layers and layers of concentric circles. But since we are rolling inwards or rolling into the well, this looks like a well, right? A potential well. Then the arrows will point inwards. Point inwards. So I think if, if we go, go back can to go this. back to the other one and just change the charge there. Okay, can I throw away this one? Uh? Can, Put back. Well, I guess we can oh, we start can. with the last. <laughs> mm, oh, negative charge. See yes. now all the electric field pointing to negative charge, right? Okay, remember this one, uh? Electric field pointing okay. negative. So just but let's do the same thing. Same thing. Draw I would just roughly draw a few equal potential surfaces. This is twenty volt. This is around so here, ten. Yep, using equal intervals. Mm -hmm. This is about 15. And 5 is about far away because we are at the low gradient, low gradient slow decrease somewhere here. Mm. So, the so equal, where's the highest gradient there? Uh, negative 5 is higher than negative 10 in physics. Inverted comma. Higher. Higher. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, lor, you think of the volcano lor, all sinking into uh, the water. So, you can see if I rotate this one. Uh, yeah. You will notice, eh? You can see this one is like a curve. Quite cool, right? Okay, okay, so that is for single charge law. Then you yeah. think of what happens if there's many, many charge. Okay, that one we save for the next video. Uh -huh. 